Hi everyone. Um, just to provide a slight context um, about me, um, so I am currently studying a PhD at York, um, and I'm to, but today I'm presenting on my master's that I did at Cambridge. Um, it's very different to my PhD. Um, it's not my main area. Um, however, I hope that the, um, the integrating science and theory will still come through, as I am a flag bearer for the integration of both sort of quite disparate methods within my within my academic kind of baby career that I've had so far and also um, in my PhD so hopefully it's still useful. Um, so I wanted to firstly just say as well I'm going to be looking at skeletal remains so there will be a few images of um, some deceased Anglo-Saxons so if you feel uncomfortable please feel free you can leave. Um, so Firstly, how do we access the individual in um, archaeology? For me, this is where integrating science and theory really comes to the fore. Um, we as archaeologists love to be able to sort of um, characterise these people in the past. Um, and there are many different ways. This is a very basic, simplistic um, demonstration of my understanding of accessing individuality, um, but it's not exclusive or exhaustive to that at all. Um, and for me, what's interesting is that we have different layers of, of, of um, complexity. And I wanted to look at genetics today to sort of access part of that, so the biological aspect of that in particular. So um, I'm looking at an Anglo-Saxon site, so I just wanted to provide sort of a, an easy summary of the Anglo-Saxons. It's again very dumbed down because it's my understanding of the Anglo-Saxon period which is not an Anglo as, as an Anglo-Saxon specialist. Um, but basically, they're characterised um, by very richly ornate furnished graves um, in the early Anglo-Saxon period with the, um, with the paganist sort of kind of traditions. As the onset of Christianity comes into play, we get unfurnished burials. But today, I am looking at the early Anglo-Saxon period between 500 and 700 AD. So alongside these furnished graves, we have a very sexed and gendered grave goods um, assemblages and interpretations. So the princess pendants found, the, the burial was not actually sexed, it was just interpreted as a princess and as a female based on the jewellery found with her, or with them I should say, gosh. Um, and also um, you get religious um, iconography as well um, with the onset of Christianity, adding further complexity to the people. Um, and you also get a nice range of collective and individual burials as well. Um, so you, you also have a really complex um, makeup of the communities and the society. So you have Jutes, Angles and Saxons, according to Bede, who probably most of you know, but I will provide a tiny summary. Um, and so it's a very complex um, society from how I saw it. Um, where we've got these changes in traditions based on a migration of new individuals and new identities. And so we also, also as a result of that, we get very kind of so mainstream um, interpretations of identity, focusing on wealth, status, gender, and also ethnicity. And it's basically the ethnicity part that I want to look into today. So ethnicity is a can be a, considered a controversial term, um, especially within the Anglo-Saxon period. Um, I kind of follow this broad definition, but please bear in mind this is broad. This is, does not encapsulate the complexity of ethnicity. And also, um, in my opinion, it's very much context specific. I and mean, it's something that I wanted to touch on further with genetics as well. I hope it comes through. Um, it depends on the unique context in which you're looking at. Um, so I want to explore how ethnicity and its complexities fits into Anglo-Saxon identity. Um, and from a recent um, article that was in the paper um, only a few weeks ago, we see this idea of ethnicity um, really coming to the fore. It's very kind of fundamental in interpretations of Anglo-Saxon identity. This, this skeletal, um, well, the skeleton was identified as belonging to a Jewish community based on the presence of a silver buckle. And for me as a prehistorian, or coming from it as a, from a prehistoric perspective, I question everything. <laughs> um, so I look at that and go, well, why? These, 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 for me, it highlights two really key issues. We don't really have a way of, of knowing how the stylistic similarities 
immaterial culture with these potential Germanic populations where these Jewish communities are coming from um, and the stuff in the stylistic material culture that we see in the UK, how do we know that that means that they're sharing an ethnicity? We don't, in my opinion. But if, if even if we did, it's a set, the second issue is that we can't assume that this woman identified as a Jute. We can't assume that that buckle even belonged to her. Um, it could have been placed there. So there's a, there's a lot of complexity to the interpretation. But whistling through the sort of background context, so Bede um, interpreted the migration of these populations into England. And um, I'm looking at a site in Cambridgeshire, which is basically the, where there's a lot of um, believed migrated populations settling. Um, so Barrington A is located in Cambridgeshire. Um, it's a site that has been interpreted as containing or, or um, evidencing Germanic material culture. And so for me, it's a really interesting site because I, can, I, I was looking at this ethnicity debate and seeing how I can look at it further through genetics at Barrington, seeing as we would assume that there would be a Germanic type of genetic um, signature there. Um, there were 149 burials, so it's a huge, huge grave um, site. I only looked at 22 with genetics, so also please bear in mind it's a master's research project. It's not massive. So we used shotgun sequencing um, of 22 individuals um, from the tooth, tooth root, um, and we got a lot of information, but I, like I said, looking at population genetics today. Um, and these are, in a nutshell, the results. And Tom really kindly provided a really great background for PCA plots, um, and Sophie as well with the, the sort of methodology of, of genetics. But um, basically, I wanted just to highlight that the German populations would be here, so they're the little green dots. So if, if potentially these individuals at Barrington seem to be Germanic populations, we would expect there to be some kind of clustering with Germ where the German um, genomes are plotting and with these early Anglo-Saxon individuals. And from the very initial analysis that I undertook, this doesn't seem to be the case. Um, and actually, they seem to be clustering with Icelandic individuals, which is even more bizarre and I can't offer you a, a, a kind of a, a, a very convincing argument for that. It's something that would be really interesting to look into. But I think it really highlights that the complexity of ethnicity. And for me, it highlights that genetics is not the answer. It's not the be all or end all because we don't still understand what that's showing. But for me, it's saying that we need to look further than just saying stylistic similarities equates to the same thing. It equates to the same ethnicity. Um, for me, that's oversimplistic and doesn't do the sites justice. So um, to sort of go into the conclusions a bit more and to tie it into the broader theme of the session, um, from my tiny baby study, um, in a very simplistic way, there was a, the German signature that you'd expect to see with a German uh, a migratory group from Germany um, was not identified in the, in the sample population. And obviously, this is only a tiny proportion. It was a, a general sample, so there was no location-specific area that we looked at. We didn't look at people based on um, the grave goods or anything, so there was no kind of bias in that sense. So we, look like we, we hope that this would be a kind of um, a good indication of the general population structure, but that can't be discounted um, as well. Um, and so... But for me, the most important thing is that the Germanic identity that's so entrenched in uh, uh, interpretations of Anglo-Saxon individuals should not be assumed in any case. Mm -hmm. Stylistic similarities are really important and they should be looked into. But why are we just focusing on it, that it's showing ethnicity? <coughs> why are we not looking into the fact that actually the fact that these individuals are having a particular style that's so different from the previous Romanic sort of the Roman traditions that could be surely a suggestion that they are very sort of strong and wanting to distance themselves from the previous Romans and actually wanting to distance themselves from that previous population. It may actually have nothing to do with ethnicity, but more actually politics as a suggestion, not a definite. Um, and there are more interesting ways to explore ethnicity, sorry, identity rather than just ethnicity, um, and to look at it more of a whole um, in something in prehistory we do or try to do, I think, quite a lot. And something with the historical documentation, I found that we got people get quite focused on what the, the historical document, documentation is telling us, rather than kind of going in blind and seeing what they find, um, which for me is the joy of prehistory. And I think maybe historical archaeologists 
could do it more, maybe. Don't want to be too controversial. Um, and finally, just to kind of tie into the broader themes of the, the session today, um, that testable data is brilliant. I mean, I think, as, as Tom so eloquently put, it jolts us into really rethinking how we're, we're interpreting people. And it jolts us in a really positive way because we're not just following the sheep and going with these entrenched assumptions that are just widely, you know, widely assumed by, I think, quite a lot of people. We're really jolted to say, well, hang on a minute, why do we believe this and should we question it? And I would say, in all cases, yes. So thank you very much. And um, thank you also for Sophie and Andy for accepting my paper. And yeah. I'd be nice to chat if anyone has any more questions afterwards. So, thank you.